Hello all, in today's video I will show you how to set values for a Niagara particle system using Blueprint. Let's jump in. Okay, in our content drawer, first we'll create a Blueprint. I will right click, new Blueprint class of type actor. We will call this BP underscore particle value changer. I will right click and I will create a particle system. I will do a new system from selected emitter and I will use the fountain base. I will hit plus and then I will hit finish. I will call this NS underscore simple fountain. I will double click. First, we're going to add a series of user parameters that we can use to tap into using our blueprint. I will hit the plus sign and I will search from the available value types which are all in here, I will use a float. So this, again, is the list of values, the different variable types that I can use that I can communicate from my blueprint to my system to change. So for instance, here, I will use a float. I will call this set spawn count, and this will be the user set spawn count that I am using in my blueprint. I'll start off with a base value of 25. I'll hit the plus sign again, and we will create a linear color type. So this is a vector four, so it has a one RGB with an alpha, and I will call this a set color. So now what we have to do is set the values that we've created into our system. So over here where it says spawn rate, what I'm going to do is up here we see spawn rate 90, I can drag this float value I just created up here. So you'll see in this situation, these are both float values, so it turns blue. But for instance, in here, I can see other values that don't take this variable type will not be highlighted. So for instance, in add velocity, I can't, it, it will do some sort of conversion uh, if I were to drag it into a vector, so vector from float. Um, but it'll come up by default as that blue and it won't say anything if it's uh, the same variable type. So here, for instance, it's a float, doesn't say anything. Here it has to do a conversion to get to that value. So now in initialize particle, I'll drag my set color onto this linear color and we're all set to go. So I'll compile and I'll save. Again, all we did is created two user parameters from the list here, which has all the available variable types. And we'll tap into that from our blueprint. So now we'll open up our blueprint by double clicking. And on event begin play, we will add some functionality. I will pull off this execution pin and say set timer by event. <coughs> First, I'll pull off the delegate here and say create event. I will create a matching event. I will say set particle values as the name of this event. I'll drag off of time and say random float in range. And I will set a min value of three, actually two and a max of five. I will set looping to true. And now I will create a comment around this section of code. I'll press C to add a comment window, and I will say set timer on event begin play. Now down here on this event, I will pull off, and first I'm going to actually create a Niagara component. So in the top left up here, I'm going to say Niagara system component, and I will set the type to my simple fountain. So here, where it says Niagara System Asset on the right, I will hit the gray arrow to drop it in there. And we can see in our viewport that it's already added. Here, you can actually see in the user parameters, some of the values become available. So if I wanted to change them immediately from here, I could change them and it would reflect in my viewport. But I'll leave it as is for now. In my event graph, I'm going to drag off my Niagara component, my components panel. I will pull off and I will say set Niagara variable. 
and it gives us all of the list of available variable types that we can change. So I'm going to first start with my float. I will drag this execution pin in here. And first I'm going to set the variable name. So if we recall, we set our float variable to set spawn count. So I will just rename, which will highlight it. I'll press control C or you could type it in exactly, but it needs to be perfectly typed. So with user variables, you actually have to add the prefix user dot, or sorry, user period, and then the name of your variable. So if you don't have this user value, it will not work properly. This is an essential part of this process. It must say user period, and then the name of your variable. From the in value, I will say random array item, so we're working backwards here. And then I will promote this to a variable, this array. So I'll say promote to variable and I'll say spawn count values. I'll hit compile. And then now over here, I'll add three distinct values. So I'll hit plus three times. The first will be 50. The second will be 250. And the final will be 1000. I'll drag for my Niagara again and I'll say set Niagara variable linear color and we'll repeat the same process. I'll connect the execution pin and my name is set color. So I will type user dot set color. I will pull off my in value and I will say random array item. I will pull off this and say promote to variable and I'll say particle colors. I'll compile. I will hit the plus sign three times. And for each of these first, let's make sure we have the alpha set to one. And the first I'll make red. So I'll add a one value in the R. For my second, I'm going to add my one value in the G. Again, make sure you have your alpha set to one. And then in the final, I'll set the one in the blue so that it gives us R, G, and B. I'm gonna drag a comment around this and I'll say set particle values on timer. So what will happen in this blueprint on event begin play, we're gonna kick off a timer that loops between every two and let's say four seconds. It's going to execute this function, which will set a random spawn count to our system from this array of values and a random color value to our system from this array of values. And that is going to tap into these set variables we've created here, which are already lined up within the respective parts of the system. So now we'll drag this into our viewport and take a look. Before we do that, actually, what I'm going to do is in my, in my scale color here, I'm going to set this to 0.5 just because uh, it's very bright because there's an emission on the particles and this will help us see the color better. So I'm going to drag in my blueprint here and I'll press play. So it'll start off white and within a second or two, we'll see now it is red. It's changed to blue. Again, it's picking sort of random colors out of the hat. It's back to red. Now it's green and we can see that it is also selecting distinct uh, spawn counts. And here in unlit mode, we can see this pretty well. So sometimes it's 25, 250, and 1,000 particles, and it is randomly selecting between the RGB values. That is all for today's video. Hope you all learned something from this tutorial, and stay tuned for more Unreal Engine 5 content. Thanks all.